I've had an epiphany. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to Steady Chaos Productions. I am your man, Steady Chaos, and tonight, it's two in the morning, and I thought of something. I have been a console gamer for many years now. Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, PlayStation 1, N64, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro, GameCube, Xbox 360, Xbox One. I haven't owned them all, but I've sure as hell played them all. And what is the one limiting factor that I've experienced this whole time with console gaming? 30 frames per second with a max cap at 60 frames per second. The highest frame rate I have ever experienced for a game is 60 frames per second. Wow. <laughs> Man, you are one pathetic loser. It is 2020, halfway through 2020. 60 frames per second. And then I got thinking to myself, you own an LG C10. That sucker can do 120 frames per second. Why have you not tried this out? You have a PC. And traditionally I have not been a PC player, like I said, merely console. So it never crossed my mind that I could download Steam, which I've never owned before. Say what? And I could download some demos. Because after all, while I don't have a great CPU, I have an Intel i7-4770 quad core with hyper threading for eight total threads that's good enough to play some games, and I have a fairly decent GPU with a GTX 1660. I'm like, wow, if I play some games at 1080p or 1440p, surely I can get close to 120 frames per second, I can at least get over 60. And as we all know, the LG C10 is G-Sync compatible. Why have I not tested this? What is wrong with me? What? I have never experienced a frame rate higher than 60 frames per second, and tonight you will get to see my reaction real time. And I have downloaded three demos, Resident Evil 3, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Wolfenstein, The New Order. Now I should preface this gameplay by saying I have played PC gaming before to some degree in the early 2000s on a CRT monitor. Bruh. <laughs> and I think then I played Call of Duty, the very first Call of Duty that came out. And I was getting about, I want to say 60 frames per second. That was the max frame rate on my monitor back then. So here I have MSI Afterburner turned on. I have Reva Statistics Tuner turned on. And you can see in the top left, I'm getting 84 frames per second right now. And this is at 1440p with mostly medium settings. So let's, I have the Astro C40 because I wanted to create an experience that is as close to console gaming as possible, so I did not want to use the keyboard and mouse. Originally, I was going to, but I wanted to use the controller, the same one I use on my PS4, to see the real difference between, say, 30 and 60 frames per second and 84 frames per second with G-Sync. So, without further ado, oh, let's do it. Yes! And, oh my god, is it smooth. It almost looks like the soap opera effect you would get from using the smooth function on the LG C10 when watching movies, like frame rate interpolation. That's what it feels like. We're up to 105 frames per second. CPU is only being used at 51%. Wow. There's no screen tearing. Look at this. There's no stuttering or skipping. Yes. It's all buttery smooth. I don't see any tearing. So we are hovering anywhere from the 70s up to the 110-ish range in frames per second. So buttery smooth. Oh, this is pretty decent performance for a seven plus year old CPU and a GeForce GTX 1660. Wow. I mean, I can only imagine what a racing game would feel like at 120 frames per second. Oh man, I cannot wait to try out Dirt 5 at 120 frames per second. And you know what? 
if you watched my previous video about OLED burn-in, you will have heard that I have a 3950X and a 2080S Super coming from iBuyPower soon, hopefully in the next two to three weeks. So with that, I should be able to, if I'm gonna game in 1440p with that, I should be able to get 120 frames per second. Easy. Here's the moment of truth, baby, what it feels like to shoot. Oh, let's get the gun out. Whoa, it's almost like, whoa. It's almost like the reticle's too fast, you know what I mean? Going from 30 frames per second, or 60 frames per second even, to 80 plus frames per second, it makes it feel so fast and glidey, almost like I need to turn down the reticle speed. This is ridiculous how fast this is. Wow. It almost will take some getting used to playing like this. It almost feels too responsive, if that makes any sense. Nope. And keep in mind, I'm playing on the LG C10 with a seven millisecond input lag at 1440p. It doesn't get much faster than that. G-Sync, 80 plus frames per second, seven millisecond input lag with a one millisecond pixel response time. <laughs> oh. Wow, it's so fast. Yes, I'm gonna get the PlayStation 5. And yes, I'm excited that a few games will be 120 frames per second. Hopefully, mostly, they'll at least be 60 frames per second. But even though I'm getting the PlayStation 5 after experiencing this, I may have to split my time between PC gaming and console gaming. Get the PlayStation 5 for the awesome exclusives from their first party studios. And then all multi-plats, I may have to play with my Astro C40 controller and my PC, my new Ryzen 3950X with 32 gigabytes of 3.6 gigahertz RAM and an eight gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Super with a 4th gen Fire Cuda SSD. Oh, uh, it's gonna rip. Cyberpunk 2077 would look sick on that PC. Wow, this is, this is amazing how smooth it is. So why don't we jump out of this game and we will try a couple more games really quick. All right, so here we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider up. And this game does not play so nicely with my GTX 1616, my i7-4770. Uh, my computer is kind of crapping its pants on 1440p, so I had to put it on 1080p with mostly low to medium setting, if I wanted to get close to 100 frames anyway. If I wanted to get close to 40 to 60 frames, I could have probably done 1440p medium. 100 frames, pushing 188 frames. This is a particularly challenging part for my GPU and CPU, unfortunately, because there's a lot of NPCs on screen. It still feels nice. I mean, we're only at 70 frames per second right now, but it still feels nice. Look at this. There's no tearing. G-Force works great. As usual. Works really well. 80 frames. It just... Games almost lose that cinematic feel that they have at 30 frames per second, though. You know, that, with that little bit of stutter, they lose that and panning shots like this when you pan the camera around, it's so smooth and seamless. It almost feels artificial at first. It really does take some getting used to. But in a good way, it's, it's a good change. And surely once you're used to games over 60 frames per second, you're used to how glidey and fast and responsive they can be, you'll adjust quickly. I was hoping for more of a kind of like platform Excuse jumping me. from ledge to ledge type sequence, but I'm not gonna make you guys sit through this entire section. But suffice to say, it feels really, really nice in this game as well. Really, really smooth. And that's only at about 70 to 80 frames per second. So let's try one more game, Wolfenstein. All right, so we have Wolfenstein 2 open now, and this game doesn't play quite as nicely with MSI Afterburner and Reva Tuner statistics. For whatever reason, 
Um, the statistics are not showing up in the upper left hand corner, but Wolfenstein does have a setting in their options that allows you to display some statistics and frames per second information in the top right hand corner. So here you see we are pushing at 135 frames per second. This game plays much more nicely with my GTX 1660. Now I skipped the intro and I played for a few seconds and whew, first person shooters by far and away benefit the most from having high frame rates. Oh yeah! So let's jump right in again with my Astro C40. Look at this, we're pushing, you see the frames up here, 100, make sure that you can see that on the camera. 129 frames per second right now. It is ridiculously smooth. Look at this. It's like butter. I killed a few of these guys. I mean, wow. Consider me at least partially converted to the PC master race. It's just, it's so fast. The aiming is so glidy. I mean, are you kidding me? I am not. I almost feel really like I have to turn down the controls, like the sensitivity like 45 maybe even. And usually in console games, I find myself turning it up. It's just, it's so fast. I mean, I'm not sure what's not to like here. This is, this is insane. Look at that. No screen tearing, no stuttering, smooth as butter, and absolutely zero latency. It is, the input lag is so fast at 1440p. is making me, after experiencing 120 frames per second gameplay, particularly on first person shooters, which are my favorite genre of gameplay, this is making me very excited for my Ryzen 3950X. I really, really cannot wait for that PC to come and then hopefully uh, the new 3000 series GPUs from Nvidia will have HDMI 2.1 so that we can run uh, 4K 120 RGB 10 bit color. Um, with the new generation of GPUs. That would be absolutely glorious with this LG C10. So my eyes have been opened um, and needless to say, I will be playing more PC games uh, from here on out. So yeah, that's gonna do it for me guys. Uh, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, let me know in the comment section down below. Leave a like and certainly subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. See you guys later, peace.